is going on Gulf Coast Nation guys welcome home we get the question all the time day in day out on social media what do I need to get into shark fishing or I'm in shark fishing how can I do better so today is starting a topic and maybe a series on how to shark fish so let's get into it alrighty so it's Blaine and Dylan with Gulf Coast Nation. If you guys are new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. We do a lot of shark fishing content. We do a lot of offshore content. We do a lot of inshore content, traveling all over the United States. But today, we're going to talk about what got us where we are today, what we do for a living. We run shark fishing trips in the Panhandle area for a living. So this is what we do full time, and shark fishing is kind of our expertise. So you can see some of the gear we got laid around here. We're going to dive into a very detailed very like gosh i mean there's just so much to a topic yeah. what to do how to shark fish is not just like this is what you do and it's and it's 30 seconds and done so we're going to do our best to cover the basis and then dive into the details as we get deeper into this series but today the first thing you got to talk about when you want to get into shark fishing is what gear do you need and basically if you're new to shark fishing the first thing you need to do is get some type of spinning reel. So behind Blaine here is a couple really good starter setups. It's what I tell people all the time when they message us. Go get a spinning reel, okay? 50 pound braid, 65 pound braid. Right now, Blaine's got the Boca 120. This is a really cheap option. We find them used for 120. I think now they make the Cabos. You can get a Cabo 80. Something that holds around, what do you think, Blaine? 300 yards of 50, 300 yards of 65 yeah, yeah. pound braid. That'll do it, and basically what you're targeting there is you're going to be casting from the beach, which you can see that's a longer rod there, a two-piece rod. And um, you want a rod that's like 9 to 12 foot, 13 foot-ish. And you want to go to tearfromatackle.com, especially if you're new. Just buy pre-made shark leaders. They've got weights on their website. They've got leaders here. They're sandbar tackle hooks. They're fantastic. And you're basically just going to go get fresh bait. You can buy mullet, whatever you want. You're going to hook a fresh small piece of bait, just a little headpiece, a little middle section, and you're just going to hunk it out there. 65-pound braid tied straight to your pre-made leader. And the best thing you can do getting into shark fishing is just get your hands on some smaller sharks. All right, start base. Like I said, we've got a second one right here, and uh, it's the BG. Is this the 5,000? It is the 5,000, yeah. And it's on a pin cone and rod. It's 7 foot 6, so it's a little bit short. It's our old popping setup, so it's just something I wanted to grab. This has 65 pound braid on it, right? Yeah, 310 yards of 65. On and this, yeah, this will handle your sharks right up to about 5, 6 foot or so. And it'll yeah. be really, really fun. You'll get to experience. You'll probably have some heartbreak. There'll be some jumping. The Sometimes it's black tips, spinners, even smaller bulls. They can jump, they can roll, you'll probably pop off, you put too much drag on them, and you'll pop off, you put too little drag, and you won't set the hook right. And that is really the beauty of shark fishing, is the experience. I can sit here and talk all day long, which I have before, I'm sure you guys have heard. But um, you gotta get out there and you gotta do it for yourself. And what I try to tell people is go handle 50 sharks. If you wanna get into shark fishing, your first summer should be spent, your first season should be spent Black tip fishing with spinning gear. If you want to run three rods, run three rods. Bring a buddy out there. Get the whole release procedure down. In Florida, you need a D-hooker. You need a tail rope. You need a pair of bolt cutters. You have things that need, you have to have to be legal. There's a Florida yes. shark fishing permit you need to take. It's a free permit, but go get it done. Get your fishing license, all that good stuff. And just get into the sport responsibly. Because that's the thing. People are getting into the sport. The sport is absolutely blowing up. It's fantastic to see, much like surf fishing did about five, six years ago, is a lot of people got into the sport, and that's fantastic if it's done properly. So, like I said, if you're new to the sport, the gear you need, 65-pound braid, 50-pound braid, 300 yards, get yourself a nice spinning setup. If you want to go conventional and you feel like you can cast with a conventional, mm -hmm. do your thing. And then, once you get about 50 sharks underneath your belt, especially black tips, if you can handle a six-foot black tip, you can probably handle a lot other bigger sharks. But the problem is, is when you get into shark fishing, everyone thinks, holy crap, sharks. I'm not, you know, they're, the shark's there and it's jumping around and they're kind of like, I don't want to touch it and I don't want to get bit and he's going to attack me. And it's, it's not really the case. You might get bit, am I saying that? But he's not going to attack you. And they're not like the movie Jaws is a fictional movie, you know. So don't, um, just get, if you get your experience with those little crackhead five foot black tips they just freak out they go everywhere you get good at getting your tail rope on you get good at de-hooking when it's time to upgrade to bigger reels and bigger drag and bigger leaders and bigger fish and kayaking baits and all this like we talked about that gets into this whole huge topic you're ready 
because you've held, you've handled those sharks before, and it honestly will be easier for you to handle in long, as long as it's not a hammer. Those bigger fish will be easier to handle once you have some time and experience underneath your belt. So that's that's topic number one. The gear you need to get into shark fishing is that. But Blaine and I will now walk you through a little bit more in depth of if you've been doing that. You've caught your sharks on spinning gear. You know how to hunk out and catch black tips, but you're wanting to go to the next level. We will cover that right now. So Blaine right here has this handy dandy 50 wide, Avid 50 wide. It's got 1,250 yards of 130 tight line braids. We want to give a big shout out to tight line braids. If you guys are looking for any braid, this is the braid to do it with right here. Tight line braids. They're made in the USA, right out of Texas. We absolutely love their stuff. We've got their 200 over here, their 130 right here, and he's got a short top shot of 150 on the Terra from a Tackle Custom Jaws Blank. Absolutely love these sticks. By the way, if you're looking for a custom rod, just go to terraformattackle.com. Hit up Spencer Wonder. Fantastic rods right there, but that's a good option right there. And then you've got your 80 wides. You even go bigger into 130s, but this is your TRX 80 narrow. It has 60 pounds at strike. It goes all the way up to 67, 70 pounds at full. That's at full spool, so obviously physics, the deeper you get. But um, these are kind of our big game reels there. We've got our custom Barrett rod here as well. So this is an 80, 130, kind of a heavier stick here. It's got some flex to it on your tip. And uh, you guys have seen this rod in action as well. It takes a little bit to, to flex it. We've got some other tear from a tackle rods that are mm -hmm. beefier that we use for big game fishing as well that we love. So um, with all that being said, why? People ask us all the time. Why do we need big reels like that? Why do you need a thousand yards of this is 200 pound braid in mono? And you want to get that fish in quickly and release it safely and efficiently because sharks do die. Sharks yes, will die. Yes. We have had sharks, guys catching sharks next to us, near us, fishing in the area using improper gear, pin senators, yes. or too low of braid, or too low of drag, which is your most common denominator. And it ends up, the fight time, if your fight time's over an hour, it's not good. No. It's not a good thing. An hour and a half, two hours. I see guys on Facebook a lot bragging, you know, this is, I caught this huge fish, and it was a two and a half hour fight time. That's not a topic for thumbs up. That's a topic for thumbs down. Because you will kill those sharks. They fight to exhaustion. They think they're in the battle of their life. They think when they get there, you're going to chop its head off or something's going to attack it. They're in absolute flight or fight mode and they're fighting for their lives. So you need to handle them properly. Much like the black tips, but the black tips doesn't take as big or gear. Those big sharks in the 10, 11, 12, 13 foot class, thousand pounds of fish. You need these big reels. You need a lot of drag. So that's the number one. We have a whole video on how to set your drags and how to set your presets. And that's what I'm talking about. You can kind of feel how in depth these topics get. But we have another video. I'll try to link it in the bio or something like that of how we set our presets or go search for the channel for it. And then you're going to need your leaders. So you see here we've got 200 pound braid from tight lines. We've got LP 200 mono for our top shot. And then from terraformattackle.com. I'm going to set this over here. We've got our weights and our leaders. And the two leaders here are basically. 50 foot long leaders. You've got a section of 800 to 1,000 pound mono right here. You've got doubled up wire. Some guys go cable, it's completely fine. Like I said, if you're getting into the big game fishing, you've done your black tips, you're getting the big game stuff, just go to terraformattackle.com. There's already a lot for you to learn. There's no sense for you to have to learn how to make your leaders. Just go to terraformattackle.com, buy these pre-made leaders, that's what we do, and they're ready to tie right on. And you go. We've got the 24 ounce circle hook here. We've got the 18 ounce circle hook here. And without jumping too far into other topics, basically your bigger baits need to go. You need to match your circle hooks up with your bait size without going too into depth on the whole bait size. There's there's so much science to that as well. But just kind of you know your smaller fin baits, fin baits or fish baits. You know barracuda, bobo, kingfish, that kind of stuff. Maybe do that on your 18 knots and then your 24 knots, your big hunks of stingray and stuff like that. And um, then you've got your tear from a tackle weight right here. They're going to come in like this, or if you order them from Shark Fishing Worldwide as well, that's another good website of Shark Fishing Worldwide. Go check them out. But any weight you get in is going to come like this, and it's just a big old Sputnik weight that doesn't break free. And you're just going to come out here. I do a two finger rule right here. You're going to go like this, two fingers, pop it out. <coughs> and you've got something like this. 
that's going to dig into the sand. We like to fixate them to the leader. Like I said, I'm not going to get into too, too into detail there, but fixate them to your leader. But the beach is back this way. They dig in. When a shark grabs it, pulls it backwards, feels nose weight. And uh, these terraformer tackle weights is what we use exclusively. We absolutely love them. So check those out as well. When you are using the, the big gear, the 80 wides, or whether it's the 50 wides, find a partner to go with at yeah. first. And even as experienced as me and Dylan are, we would most likely never go hit the beach by ourselves. If you do, best way, Dylan has a video of it, how to do it efficiently by yourself, tie yourself off to a boat anchor, make sure you do not get drugged in the water. Yeah, because you still have to, if you go solo, which like he said, don't go. Try not to go. Even if like I'm going out of town in a couple of days, Blaine's going to fish, he's got people coming in to fish with him because there's no sense in going by yourself. But if you do, we do have a video up and um, you still have to lay proper drag, right? You have to put yes. heavy drag in these fish. And a lot of this drag, 60 pounds, you can't hold it by yourself. And again, if you're new to shark fishing, you know what you're thinking. If I'm 180 pounds, why can't I hold 60 pounds of drag? It doesn't work that way. Trust me. Just just literally take my word for it, please. Because <laughs> don't try to hold 60 pounds of drag with a running fish. Because if you get pulled on your face in the harness, it, that fish doesn't stop for you. They don't care. So another topic of gear here before we get into uh, other tips and techniques. We're kind of just... We're going with the flow. We have this whole thing, but we're, we're just sharing as much knowledge as we can as quick as, as quick as possible. So this is a fighting plate basically with a harness. We like using these P19 Barrett fighting plates. Apex on shore has some as well. Um, I think Shark Fishing Worldwide might have some soon. And then we love the braid play action harness. AFCO sells a decent harness as well, but if you, uh, if you wanna get into it and you get into it right, go with the play, braid play action harnesses with these, you slide right into them, and you guys have seen the videos before. We're bowed up, you get to use your legs here, it goes around your butt, goes up on your lower back, you get to use your weight and lean into the fish, and that allows you again to one, be comfortable, but two, get the fish in fast and do it properly. So, along the lines of the big game stuff, you can see, Blaine and I have talked about a 50 wide and 80 wide here, and some of you watching this might be shark fishermen, and you're going, why in the world do you have a 50 wide? And that kind of brings me into the next topic of location, location, location. So if you're shark fishing and you're in the northeast of the United States and you're going to see sandbars and sand tigers pretty much forever and you probably will never see a 10 foot fish, you'll never see a hammerhead, there's no reason for you to go buy a 130. It's just not, it's just not, it's just not a reason. Here in the panhandle, we can get away in the wintertime with 50 wides and long drops because there's no hammers. And I'm just, I'm just telling you this and I'll explain what I mean later. There's no hammers. So, so hammers are basically a, a big factor because hammers die really easy. They have a huge lactic acid buildup in their muscles which causes them to die and float off. So 50 wides here in the Panhandle, 50 wides maybe in the Northeast, 50 wides maybe in Jacksonville in the right time of year, uh, Texas, certain drops, whatever. Mm -hmm. In the winter time, we take our 50 wides. We absolutely bomb them. You've seen Blaine catch huge dusky sharks. You saw Bearded Brad break 10 foot on my 50 narrow reel that we dropped like 450 yards. It can be done here in the winter time. Now, if you're going to go to South Florida, there's no reason for you to bomb 50 wide because there are hammers there. Mm -hmm. And hammers pull crazy drag. They fight crazy hard. And yes, we have 1,300, 1,400 yards, 1,300 yards total-ish on here. And yes, that's enough line to handle a hammerhead, but that's not enough drag to stop a hammerhead. That's set around 40 pounds at strike. You need 55, 50, 60 pounds of drag at strike to stop those fish. You're going to need a spotter for that. So we would never take this 50 wide to South Florida. We do trips in South Florida. Blaine and I have hooked hammers. If you want proof, just watch this. You got me. I'm about to go. <laughs> Yeah, baby! Hold it, hold it. Right, guys, I'm about to go. Right? It's gone. It's gone. I saw that that you know it's it's this reel right here they got absolutely dumped Blaine on the same size reel 80 with 60 pounds of drag at strike we're still getting dumped so you can only imagine what 40 pounds 
leave the house. Yeah. And um, luckily, we broke off on both those fish because they would have been longer fight times. And like I said, you don't want long fight times. So it is a little bit. You've got to kind of – because you're going to get opinions everywhere. Fishing, shark fishing, knitting, crafting. If you're in cars, if you're in mechanics, if you're, whatever your hobby is, there's always going to be people in this huge array giving you opinions constantly. And we're trying to be a source of actual – expertise opinion we've been doing it. i've been doing it for eight years you know i know a little bit of what i'm talking about and we do it full time we see hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of sharks every year so we have a little bit of credibility when we're sharing this stuff with you but there might be opinions saying there's you should never own anything under a 130 that might be true for south florida yes but if you live in pensacola you don't need to listen to the opinion of those from South Florida because it's it's they're talking they're not wrong they're just talking about their location so we're trying to give you a good array of everything in your location so location does matter know the species of sharks that are around that time of year given the water temperature given the season given what people have been catching and then you basically plan for the biggest shark we will use the 50 wives in the summertime the 50 wives will be dropped with really small baits right on the other side of the bar which here is not the same as South Florida. We don't get hammers right on the other side of the bar as much. We get our hammers a little deeper. And so this will be a, basically a bull shark and black tip reel all summer long. These will get dropped for hammers. And we'll be preparing for hammers. Now we catch bull sharks on them. We catch black tips on them. We catch tiger sharks on them. That 50 wide can handle all those but for hammers. But when you go shark fishing, you have to plan for the worst case scenario. And the worst case scenario is a 13 foot hammer picking up your bait and then you killing that fish which is bad for you, bad for the fish, bad for the sport. And that's what we mainly want is just keep the sport going. Everyone's getting into it, so let's get into it responsibly. All right, so kind of wrapping up this word vomit to you guys. The last topic we have is bait. And this is another one of those big opinion things. Here's what we found. We have caught giant sharks on giant baits. We've caught giant sharks on tiny baits. So we've caught big sharks on stingray, we've caught big sharks on bobo, we've caught them on kingfish and barracuda and all this stuff. I don't think there is one end all be all bait. I really do not. But I think the things that you can really control is one, how fresh is your bait? And um, obviously the fresher the better. If you go out there and you get a big southern stingray, you're gonna get guys who say they don't like southern stingray. Spencer Wonder, the tear from a tackle, is one who absolutely will not run a southern ray to save his life. And that guy has been all over the country, way more of an expert on shark fishing than we are. We run Southern Ray. We've caught some absolutely massive fish. Not saying Spencer's wrong. It may not be a great bait. But if you get a fresh one, go run it. If you get fresh cow nose, go run it. Here's basically the rundown for the big game and the small game stuff. We'll start with the big game stuff first of what you're looking for. You're going to be looking for Bonita or false albacore or mm -hmm. depending on what coast you're on maybe it's little toonies or it's actually albacore and it's actually a bonita mm -hmm. fish um so you got bonita then you've got barracuda if you can get your hands on barracuda we get ours offshore so you can go out to reefs and stuff like that sometimes you can go to docks or go to marinas when the charters are coming back in and you can get those barracuda and kingfish i kind of put those in the same category barracuda kingfish yeah. if you don't have the option to go get those fish you can go get them at marinas bobo kingfish cuda all that kind of stuff your next in your fin baits is going to be amberjack. Amberjack are good baits as well. Obviously, you don't want heads and bait sections that are this big. I like those barely legal amberjack where you can cut little slots out of them. Get good ones. In the wintertime, black drum is also good bait. Yes. Okay, so those that's, that's about the array of fish baits, right? Black drum, kingfish, grouper. Amberjack. Grouper, yeah. Grouper Another heads. one you can get uh, at the marinas. Go get grouper heads. Cobia heads. They flay the fish. Yeah, cobia heads. So basically, if you don't have a boat and you want to go get some of those fish baits, you're going to be going to the marinas or going to your buddies. Or if you go offshore, you're looking for these. You're looking for bonita, kingfish, cuda, cobia, grouper, amberjack. Um, that's basically the array of baits we like to keep in our freezers mm -hmm. down here. Tuna. If yeah, you tuna heads. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we love we love using black fin heads. Small yellow fin heads. Don't get those massive yellow fin heads. But if you can get a hold of some tuna heads as well. And then on the ray side, basically you've got your Atlantic or Southern Stingray. I kind of put those in the same category. We get a lot of Southerns here. Other places get Atlantic more than Southern rays. And then you've got your Cano Stingray. Cano Stingray are a fantastic bait. They're really bloody. They're really hardy. They don't get crabbed. And that's an awesome bait as well. So those are the baits. Woo. Those are the baits you're looking at on the big game side. And then if you go to the small game side. Pretty easy to get off the beach. You've got whiting. Whiting's a fantastic bait. You go surf fishing, you catch a little whiting. You can cut him in half. If he's real small, just cut his tail off. Chunk him out there for black tip. Lady fish, 
bluefish, if you don't like eating pompano, pompano's a pretty good bait. Some people are like, what the heck, man? And then something we didn't add to the big game side, jack of all. Yes. Jack of all yeah. series bait. So I was just thinking about that as well. So, um, and then, shoot, what else for the small game side? I mean, you can take... Mullet. Yeah, mullet's a good bait. Um, anything that's just your smaller fish baits, I would stick to your fish baits. Casting for black tips, yes, you can take Southern Stingray that's really hardy and make them really small chunks and cast them out. But stick to your fish baits because it's easy to check your baits, right? You can um, you can cast it out, leave it for 30 minutes. All you got to do is reel it back in, rebait it, chunk it back out there. Last thing kind of about, or last few things about the bait is... Um, if you're running them out on the big game gear, you're cocking out your baits. If you run any of those fish baits, Amberjack, Jack Creval, Kingfish, Cuda, Bobo, Tuna Heads, whatever it is, especially in the summertime, wherever you are here, <coughs> bless you. Did you sneeze? Let's go. Okay. You get blue crabs. Here we get blue crabs. Other places you might get weird crabs. I don't know. But anyways, you get crabs in the ocean. And uh, they will go in, they will pick your baits, they make a clicking noise underwater. When one hears the clicking noise of one eating, they all just kind of hover to it. And in two hours, you could have a big bonita like this be a complete skeleton and be gone, nothing left of it. So um, those baits you want to check within two, two and a half hours every night you fish. If you check it once and it's good to go and you drop it back down, um, you can either reel in your baits or you can put the line over your lap and then you can roll out and trace the line out and check it depending on if it's too rough or the current's really bad or not. And um, if you check it, it's good to go. Maybe give it another two hours and then check it again or three hours on the next one. But um, we have days where it's sometimes you could let a big bonita or tuna head set for 24 hours. It's gonna come in still bleeding, still fresh, still good to go. And there's other times where we've checked it in two hours, like I said, and it's com completely picked clean. And you just don't wanna be fishing on uh, you know interest. What is that, fishing on? Fishing on credit. Fishing on credit, jeez. Um, so that's kind of the little subtopic about the baits there. And then the last one is you've got your hook placement. So Blaine's got rubber bands over here. We talk about hook placement um, in another video. I'll link that in the description somewhere as well. But um, you got your big 24 O's, you got your big 18 O's on your baits. And then I go over the hook placement and then you want to go get rubber bands. Uh, and again, in the video, I show you how to use rubber bands, how it works, where to put the hooks, all that good stuff. So we go over hook placement in another video, but that's the gear you need. You need your two different sizes hooks, one in the 18 to 20 out size range, and then you can have some in the 24 out range if you like running the baits, and then just go get rubber bands from Walmart. So <sighs> I hope, hope the word mumbo jumbo that we just gave you kind of came out to something that is understandable and useful to you guys. We want to do more of this stuff in the future is just kind of take all this information. Maybe you watch this video a couple times through, maybe you're taking notes and there's going to be things that you already know. There's going to be things that maybe aren't useful to you, but I would go through this video a couple times. Um, take notes on what you want. Take all the information that you can use and is useful to you. Just discard the rest. But the main thing is, is we just want you guys to go out there. I want you guys to have a good time. Catch your guys' biggest shark. And um, shoot us a message. Tell us about it. I want to yeah. know. We want to know when you guys catch those big sharks. We get messages a lot like that as well. We just had somebody send us like a giant 13-foot hammerhead the other day. And he was like, I watch your guys' channel. I got your Gulf Coast Nation panhandle rig from Terraform Tackle. Mm -hmm. And it worked like a charm. And he caught a freaking 13-foot hammer, which is bigger than we've caught. So that's that's just cool stuff to, uh, to see the followers using our information and then going to get giant fish. So... That's going to be it for today's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I really hope you guys got something out of it. If, um, if you want to see us do, if you have questions during this, drop them in the comments below. Um, if you have more topics that you think we should cover in this category, again, just tell us in the comment section. Shoot us a message, whatever. But that's going to be it for today's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys got something out of it. If you did, be sure to give us a thumbs up. Drop a comment below. Share with your friends. Go ahead and subscribe. And as always, we'll catch you guys in just a couple days. You.